be talking about developing patient-centered pain management treatment plans. I'm Dr. Anita Karnick, and I'm an addiction psychiatrist working in a chronic pain and wellness center. Today, we're going to talk about creating patient-centered treatment plans that incorporate patients' goals, preferences, and individual circumstances. So let's start with the case. We have a 56-year-old male that presents to the emergency department with hip pain. He has a history of chronic back pain. He's diaphoretic and appears anxious. Has goose flesh skin. You check the PDMP and see prescription for oxycodone 10 milligrams, increasing monthly over the past year. You ask if he took pain medication this morning, and he shares that he ran out of medication and took his last oxycodone two days ago. He has been running out early and needing increasing doses over the past four months. Our patient is in withdrawal, has pain, and discloses an accidental overdose six months ago. What do you do? While we are hearing our patient and his identified concern, this may be a time that a clinician may be overwhelmed with thoughts on how to navigate this case. Questions that may come up could include, is this an opioid addiction? Should we refer directly for detox as the immediate plan? What are the risks if we give more opioids and what if the patient overdoses again? And how do we manage the distress coming from our patient saying he is in pain? Clinicians may not feel comfortable navigating difficult conversations surrounding the patient's use of opioids. This can lead to very challenging patient-clinician interaction. So we would like to take a look at the scope of this problem and why it matters. Physicians and other healthcare professionals have reduced opioid prescribing in every state for 10 consecutive years. State prescription drug monitoring programs are highly utilized in every state. So while opioid prescribing has dramatically decreased, opioid-related overdose deaths have concurrently increased. Deaths are largely driven by the use of synthetic opioids. Some positive news includes new data released by the CDC, which indicates that from June of 2023 to June of 2024, overdose deaths have declined approximately 14%. This is a reversal of drug overdose mortality numbers compared to trends from the prior decade and reflects efforts such as access to naloxone and medications like buprenorphine. This is a very uplifting change in trend However, it is important to remember, overdose deaths continue to be a large concern. It is important that clinicians use a patient-centered approach to patients struggling with opioids. A VA study showed that patients were at higher risk of overdose and suicide death after stopping opioid treatment. This risk increased the longer an individual had been treated with opioid treatment prior to stopping. Opioid safety efforts involve taking a broader patient safety perspective and consider risk mitigation. These efforts also include open communication and discussion with our patient in treatment planning and having our patient as the central focus of dis treatment decision making. Clinicians should keep in mind that effective pain treatment should include a focus on quality of life. This includes discussing with our patient their perception of well being and addressing mental health wellness. We want to have a focus on improved functionality. We want to ask our patients what are meaningful activities they would like to engage in. We also want to have a focus on activities of daily living. This can include self-efficacy and discussion with our patient of what they'd like to see themselves doing. And we know that patients who are active participants in their decision making have increased engagement and motivation to follow the treatment plan. Patients who perceive they have limited autonomy may not feel empowered to ask questions and advocate for themselves, and this can lead to poor health outcomes. So what can we do? We want to discuss with our patients chronic pain, give education about types of pain and different treatment strategies. We want to include our patient in discussing options for pain management with risks and benefits. And we also want to consider a biopsychosocial approach. 
This also includes addressing safety and misuse issues and discussing appropriate assessment of opioid use disorder in non-stigmatizing language. We want to assess for an elevated suicide risk. As we discuss treatment options, we can discuss consideration for switching to our partial opioid agonist. We can also discuss with our patient a patient-centered taper with appropriate support. When we talk to our patient, we want to consider managing with non-opioid options. We want to consider treatment of co-occurring behavioral health conditions. Also, we do want to do screening and use diagnostic tools such as PDMP and laboratory data. It's important for us to not make that the central focus of treatment decision-making, rather use these tools as a way to open up the conversation with our patient. We want to provide naloxone, and we want to avoid a sense of stigma. Stigma can be a barrier to treatment of painful conditions. Motivational interviewing can be a helpful skill to open up discussion of where a patient may feel stuck in their care. And remember, we want to partner with our patients and we can often start the conversation with what is important to you. So in conclusion, we discussed options with our patient here in the emergency department, including non-opioid, non-pharmaceutical, and buprenorphine options. Our patient felt that he related to concepts presented about opioid dependence and complex opioid dependence and wanted to try buprenorphine. He had been on it before and remembered that he was able to focus his life on things that were important to him when he felt stable on the medication. We gave our patient education on whole person approach to chronic pain and then referred him for continuation in outpatient clinic. We also provided him with naloxone. When our patients are active participants in their treatment plan, we are able to offer them evidence-based plans that patients feel motivated to engage in. Thank you.